Hello and welcome to part three of my interval video series. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, I strongly recommend you watch those first. I will put links to those in the description below. We're going to pick up right where we left off at the end of my part two video, and we're gonna keep going through different examples and figuring out the interval names of each one. We're also going to learn about doubly augmented and doubly diminished intervals as well. If at any time you want to jump ahead to the next section in this video, I have timestamps in the description below, which can help you just jump ahead easily. So picking up where we left off, uh, we had only been doing intervals that started with the note C. So we're going to now do intervals that start with other notes. So let's start with, oh, I don't know, we could start with one uh, that starts with an A, okay? So let's do A to C sharp, okay? Let's figure out what this interval is. Let's go over our steps again. So first step is we figure out what the interval number is, right? So what's the interval number between A and C sharp? Remember, we just count the letters. So ignoring any sharps or flats, just looking at the letters of the notes, we're gonna count them. So A, B, C, that's three letters. So therefore the interval number is a third, right? So we know it's the third. Then step two, we're going to think about the major scale of our first note, right? So what is the A major scale I have? And step three, I'm gonna ask myself, is the second note in the interval, that C sharp, is that C sharp anywhere in that A major scale? And why don't you tell me? And now at this point, we do look at the sharps and the flats. So now we are paying attention to any sharps and flats. Um, and you tell me, do you see a C sharp anywhere in this scale? I do right there, right? So since C sharp is part of that scale, we don't have to alter the interval name at all. We can just go to our default settings for interval names, look up the third, and where's the third? Ah, okay, here's third. It says it's a major, right? That's the default setting. Therefore, the interval name of A to C sharp is a major third, cool? If you're confused at all, then you really need to go back and watch those part one and part two videos because I break this down much more slowly. And if you're still confused after watching all three, you can ask me any questions in the comments below. Okay, let's do another. How about A to C? Okay, first step, we're gonna figure out what the interval number is, right? What's the interval number? A, B, C, that's a third, so we know it's a third. Okay, step two, we're gonna think about the major scale of that first note, right? So we're gonna think about an A major scale, okay? So let's write out A major scale. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, and G sharp. Okay, now step three, we're gonna ask ourselves, is the second note in the interval, that C, is that part of this A major scale? And remember, now we pay attention to sharps and flats. So do you see the note C anywhere in the scale? I don't, I see a C sharp, but I don't just see a C natural. So that means we need to alter this interval name. So what's the default setting for a third typically? The default setting is typically a major third, right? So if the interval were actually A to C sharp, as we just did before, it would be a major third, right? But now since we have A to C, we need to alter that word major. So we're gonna go up to these our qualities chart up here. And we're gonna find the word major, okay? So where's major? Here's major. And if we're going from C sharp to C, so um, if you were to imagine going from the note C sharp to the note C, are you moving down a half step or up a half step? We're moving down a half step when we go from C sharp to C natural. So we're gonna find major and we're gonna go down to the left. So it's gonna become minor. Therefore, this interval A to C is a minor third. Cool, let's do some more. What about A to D sharp? Okay, again, first step, we're gonna figure out the interval number. What's the interval number? A, B, C, D, that's a four. So it's gonna be something fourth. Now, step two, we're gonna think about the major scale of the first note. Again, I'm gonna write out that A major scale, so. A, B, C sharp, D, D, F sharp, C sharp. And step three, we're gonna ask ourselves, is that second note in the interval, that D sharp, is that D sharp part of that A major scale? And you tell me, do you see the note D sharp anywhere there? I don't, I see a D natural, but I don't see a D sharp. So that means this one's going to be altered. So if the interval were A to D, it would be a perfect fourth, but we have A to D sharp. So to go from that default setting note, which was a D, to our altered setting note, which is a D sharp. So to get from the note D to the note D sharp, do we need to move up a half step or down a half step to go from D natural to D sharp? We move up a half step, right? So that means we're gonna have to move the quality name as well, that word perfect, that's gonna have to move up one box as well. So let's find the word perfect, okay? So here's our word perfect, and we're gonna move it up to the right and see that word augmented, 
Therefore, A to D sharp is an augmented fourth. So really, when you're thinking about interval names, you can think of um, the first note in the interval is sort of like the uh, key signature of that interval in a way. Okay, how about uh, B flat to C flat? Why not? So first step, I'm going to figure out the interval number. So we're going to ignore the flats. We're just going to look at the letters B to C. And how many letters is that? B, C. That's two letters. So this is going to be some kind of second, right? Okay, step two is we're gonna think about our B flat major scale. So let's write out a B flat major scale. Now, third step is we're gonna ask ourselves, is C flat part of that scale? And you tell me, do you see a C flat there? I don't, I see a C, but I don't see a C flat. So if it were B flat to C, what would the interval name be? Like what's that default setting name for this interval B flat to C? That would be a major second. If it were if it were B flat to C, it would be major second, right? But we have B flat to C flat. So it's gonna be a something second, but what kind of second is it gonna be? So to go from C to a C flat, do you lower it a half step or raise the note a half step to get from the note C to the note C flat? You're going to lower it a half step, right? So I'm gonna find the word major. All right, here's my word major, because it's normally a major second, B flat to C. And I'm going to lower it one box or move it over one step so it gets the word minor. Therefore, B flat to C flat is a minor second. Got it? Okay, what about the interval E flat to A flat? So first step, we're gonna figure out the interval numbers. So we're gonna ignore the flats, just look at the letters of the notes and count the letters, E, F, G, A. That's four letters, therefore this is going to be some kind of fourth, okay? Step two is we're going to think about the major scale connected to the first note in the interval, so an E flat major scale. So let's write out an E flat major scale, shall we? So E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, and D. And you know, if you're still trying to memorize your major scales, one thing that I think is really helpful is to try to say the names of the notes out loud um, of every major scale whenever you get the opportunity. So even when I'm writing the scale out like this, you can say it out loud with me. E flat F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D. And I also think that when you're speaking it, it's good to try to speak it with a specific kind of rhythm where you can really feel those sharps and those flats. For instance, every time I'm saying a flat, it adds another syllable to it, right? E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D. So when you speak it, be sure to really listen to and feel the rhythm of the, just, just the way it sounds speaking it. E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D. Da, 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 right? That's what an E flat major scale sounds like rhythmically. Okay, moving on. So we figured out E flat major scale here. We wrote that out. Now, step three is we're going to look at that note A flat, that second note in the interval, and we're going to ask ourselves, hey, is A flat anywhere in that major scale? And yes, it is. Look, it's right there. So since it is part of the scale, we get to use the default settings for a fourth. So what's the default um, interval quality name for a fourth? All right, there's fourth. So it's perfect. Therefore, this is a Perfect fourth. Okay. Now, what about E flat to A? Okay, so now I'm altering it slightly from the A flat. So again, this is also going to be some kind of fourth, right? Because it's still E to A. Um, so I can even write the word fourth there, the number fourth. And um, I just have to alter this word perfect now because it's no, no longer going to be a perfect fourth. It's going to be some kind of fourth, but not a perfect fourth. So to get from the note A flat to A, do we move up a half step or down a half step to get from A flat to A? We move up a half step, right? So we're going to find that word perfect on our chart and we're going to move up one box, okay? Because remember, we can think of these boxes as sort of like, they're sort of like a half step apart from each other. So from perfect, up one half step, we would get to the word augmented. So that means this interval is going to be called an augmented fourth. Got it? Okay, now this is gonna be a little tricky. So what if the interval is E flat to A sharp, okay? What if that's the interval we're trying to find? Ooh, okay, so Again, it's gonna be some kind of fourth, right? Because the letters are still E to A, right? 
So still a fourth, but it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be augmented. What's it gonna be? So as, as you can see, to get from the note A flat to A, we have to move up one half step. And then to get from the notes A to A sharp, we also have to move up one half step. So starting here, the word perfect for my A flat, here's, we're starting there. Then we moved up to A, we got to augmented. But then if I moved it up another half step, hey, I, I get to the end of the chart. So what on earth do we do with A sharp? So this is what is we would call a doubly augmented fourth, okay? So that is that is really the name of it, is doubly augmented, okay? So you can envision this chart up here um, as having four more extra boxes. There's an extra box here that says doubly diminished, and one here that says doubly diminished as well and one on the far right that says doubly augmented up there and doubly augmented right there. Cool? Okay, how about the interval E flat to C sharp? So, what's the interval number first? We have to figure that. E, F, G, A, B, C. That's six, six letters, therefore it's gonna be a something sixth. Now, next thing we're gonna ask ourselves is what's that E flat major scale? So I, I kept it written up right here, so there's our E flat major scale. E flat F G, A flat B flat C D. Okay, so we're gonna third step, ask ourselves, is that note C sharp part of the scale? Do you see the note C sharp there? I don't, I see C, but I don't see C sharp. E flat to C is a major sixth, but we have E flat to C sharp. So to get from the note C natural to the note C sharp, do we move up a half step or down a half step? To get from C natural to C sharp, we move up a half step, right? So we're gonna find that word major, here's major, and to move up a half step, we're gonna to get to the word augmented. Therefore, E flat to C sharp is an augmented sixth. Cool. Okay, how about from E flat to D flat? Okay, so again, we're gonna first figure out the interval number between E flat and D flat. You just look at the letters, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, that's a seven, so seventh. This one's gonna be something seventh, okay? And then next step is we're gonna ask ourselves, hey, is D flat part of that E flat major scale? Well, you tell me, do you see the note D flat there? I don't, I see D natural, but I don't see D flat. So this one's gonna be altered again. First, let's think about, okay, what is the default setting for a seventh interval? Well, it's a major, see, major seventh, right? So if the interval were E flat to D natural, since that's what's in the scale, it would be a major seventh. So E flat to D natural, major seventh but we have E flat to D flat, okay? So to get from the note D natural to the note D flat, because that's how we have to alter it away from the this, this scale, do we move down a half step or up a half step to get from D natural to D flat? We move down a half step, right? So we're gonna find that word major, here's major, we're gonna move down a half step, right? We get to the word minor. Therefore, E flat to D flat is a minor seventh. Cool. Now, I understand if you find this a little bit confusing that an E flat, so here's the note E flat on the piano, an E flat to a C sharp is called an augmented sixth, but an E flat to a D flat is called a minor seventh. Because if you notice, the notes C sharp and the note D flat are the exact same pitch, right? This note right here on the piano that's between the notes C and D, this note can go by two different names. It can go by the name C sharp or the name D flat. And the term for that is enharmonic equivalent, right? So the note C sharp is an enharmonic equivalent of the note D flat, meaning they're two different note names that share the same pitch. So how come this interval E flat to C sharp and E flat to D flat, you know, they're it's literally the exact same two notes, yet we can call it two different names. We could call it an augmented sixth or a minor seventh, depending on what the note names are. Now, I totally understand why you might find that confusing and unnecessarily complicated, but if you can understand the concept of an enharmonic equivalent note, for instance, if you can understand the concept that this one single note can go by two different names, right? It could go by C sharp or D flat, then I think you can also understand the concept of an enharmonic interval, which is what this is actually called. So an augmented sixth and a minor seventh are what we call enharmonic intervals. So just the same way we have enharmonic equivalent notes, we also have enharmonic intervals. And remember, the reason why we would call this either an augmented sixth or a minor seventh just completely has to do with 
which note names we're using. So the note names affect the interval names. So that's why it's so important to understand what the correct name is for something in music theory. And that's why we're learning how to correctly identify the name of an interval. Because sure, if you're playing music and you refer to this note as a D flat when you should have been referring to it as a C sharp, other musicians are gonna know what you're talking about. It's not like you can't play music if you don't know all these little rules. However, if you're studying music theory, it is very important to actually know the correct names of things because as you keep building on top of it, you're gonna get really confused um, if you don't understand the differences of these names. Okay, so now we're gonna figure out some interval names together without having that cheat sheet there. And you know, I think this is good because it's gonna show you that it's not actually that hard to have this memorized, these little charts in your head, and you don't really need to have it written out, okay? So let me, let's, let's just go through it. So uh, let's pick a random interval. How about um, D to F sharp, okay? Let's do it. So first step first, we're gonna think about the interval number, right? Just the letters D, E, F, third. Right, so it's gonna be something third, okay? Next step is we're gonna think about the D major scale. Uh, so let's write that out. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, right? So say it out loud. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Da, 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 da. And then we're gonna ask ourselves, is F sharp part of that major scale? Yes, it is part of the D major scale, right? You see F sharp there. So we can use the default settings for a third. So do you remember what the default setting is for a third? So if you remember, they're all major except for the fourth and the fifth, which are perfect, and then the unison and the octave are also perfect. So a third is a major third, right? So D to F sharp is a major third. Okay, how about um, A flat to uh, D. All right, so first step, we're gonna figure out the interval number, A, B, C, D, it's a fourth, so it's gonna be something fourth, right? Then we're gonna now think about an A flat major scale, right? So A flat major scale, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, and G. A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G. Da, 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 da. So, is the note D part of that scale? No, it's not. We have a D flat, but we don't have a D natural. So this one's gonna be altered. So first things first, let's think about what is the default setting for a fourth? What's the default setting for a fourth? Do you remember? So remember I said they're all major except for the fourth and the fifth, and then the unison and the octave, which are perfect. So the default setting for a fourth is perfect. So here's my interval A flat to D, and um, the default perfect fourth would be A flat to D flat, right? A flat to D flat, that's the perfect fourth. But we have A flat to D. So we're moving from D flat up to D in order to alter it. So we're getting a half step higher, right? So it's not a perfect fourth, but it's augmented fourth. Cool? Perfect fourth, augmented fourth. So this would be an augmented fourth. Got it? Okay, what about um, C sharp to E sharp, okay? So first things first, let's figure out the interval number. C, D, E, that's three, so it's a something third, right? Now let's think about a C sharp major scale. So C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp. So C sharp major scale, pretty easy to remember since they're all sharpened, okay? Same with a C flat major scale, they're all flattened. Okay, so C sharp major scale. Is the note E sharp part of that C sharp major scale? Yes, it is, it's right there. So we get to use the default setting for a third. So what is the default name for a third? Do you remember? It's a major third, therefore this is a major third. Cool. What if instead of E sharp, we had an E natural, okay? So here's my C sharp. And then, so this would be an E sharp. It's the same note as an F, an E sharp, right? So C sharp to E sharp, but I have a C sharp to E instead. So this is a major third, right? C sharp to E sharp, but I have C sharp to E natural. So is this interval getting smaller or bigger? So this is major third and then something third. Major third, something third. Is it getting smaller? Yeah, it's getting smaller, right? We're moving down a half step. Therefore, we're going to turn that major into what? Do you remember, in, try to visualize that chart, what is to the left of the word major? Minor third, see? 
if you want to see the cheat sheet really quickly, see there's major, we move it down one, it gets the word minor. So minor third. All right, what about C sharp to E flat? Okay, it's still a third because the letters are still C and E in the interval name. So we started with C sharp to E sharp, and that's a major third, right? Then we had C sharp to E natural, that's a minor third. And now C sharp to E flat, it just got even smaller. So what's smaller than a minor? Something we, we, if we lower it even one more half step, the interval's getting even smaller, it becomes a diminished third, right? Because see, remember here, started at major, moved to minor, and then to diminished. So this is going to be a diminished third. Got it? Okay, now we're gonna do a tricky one. So C sharp, start with C sharp to G sharp, okay? So what is C sharp to G sharp? Well, first let's figure out the number. C, D, E, F, G, that's five letters, so it's a fifth, okay? So it's something fifth. Okay, now C sharp to G sharp. Is G sharp part of that C sharp major scale? Yes, it is. So we can go by the default interval quality name for a fifth. What's the default for a fifth? It's a perfect fifth, right? So that means this is a perfect fifth. So that one's pretty easy. Cool. Now, what about if I had a C sharp to G natural, okay? So G is actually not part of this scale, right? I know it's still gonna be a fifth, so it's gonna be something fifth, but it's not gonna be a perfect fifth. So if we look on the keyboard, here's my C sharp and then G sharp, this is a perfect fifth, but we're gonna have a C sharp to a G. So this is the perfect fifth and this is the something fifth. If we move that perfect to the left in our chart, what does it go to? goes to diminished, right? So this is a diminished fifth. See, we we're at perfect, and then we moved it one space over, we got to the word diminished. Okay, so here's the tricky one. What about C sharp to G flat, okay? So this one's tricky. So I know, again, I know it's gonna be something fifth, right? Because it's still, the letters are still C and G. But now I have a G flat. So I was at C sharp to G sharp was a perfect fifth. C sharp to G natural, which got a little bit smaller, that's a diminished fifth. But what about C sharp to G flat? Because now it's gotten even smaller, this interval, right? It went from here to here to here. Perfect to diminished to something else. So what is this one called? So this is going to be a doubly diminished fifth, okay? Doubly diminished. Just like that, right? So remember, as I said, with our chart, we have these extra boxes that I didn't draw off to the side, but there's a di doubly diminished over there and doubly augmented there. So see, we move from perfect to diminished and then to doubly diminished, cool? So C sharp to G flat, doubly diminished fifth. Okay, what about um, C to C sharp, okay? Hmm, this one's a little interesting, right? So. First, let's figure out the interval number, right? So if we're just looking at the letters, it's, it's a unison, right? From C to C sharp, because we're just looking at the letter from C to C. And this isn't jumping, I'm not going from C to C sharp up there, I'm going from C just to this C sharp right here. So, so this is a, it's a something unison, okay? And the next thing I'm gonna think about is my major scale of the first note. So that's a C major scale, nice and easy, no sharps or flats, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, right? Cool, now third step is I ask myself, is that second note C sharp part of that scale? No, it's not, right? It's, I have C, but I don't have C sharp. So if it were C to C, like that, just C to C, right in the same spot, that would be a perfect unison, right? Because that's the, that's the interval quality name is for any unison, it's a perfect, right? So perfect unison. Yet, we have a C to a C sharp. So, what comes after the word perfect in our quality chart? Do you remember? It's an augmented, right? See, after perfect, we get to augmented. So, this is what we would call an augmented unison, cool? So as you can see, um, even with these sort of trickier ones like this, if you still follow those rules I laid out in videos one and two, which we've been going through and practicing in this video, um, you will still get to the correct interval name. Um, so it really is that simple. So as long as you know your major scales and you can think through it logically and, and you remember how to alter the 
quality name, then you're always gonna be able to figure out what the correct interval name is for any interval. Okay, so last one we're gonna do is F to F flat. So step one, we think about what is the interval number. Um, I'm looking at this F and then this F flat, so they're very close to each other, okay? So what is the interval number first? for the F to F. So we think about the letters. Again, this is another just unison, right? Because F and F are the same letter. Next step is we're just gonna think about an F major scale, right? So let's write that out. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, and E, right? Third step, we're gonna look at that note F flat and ask ourselves, is it anywhere in that scale? No, it's not. We have an F natural, but not an F sharp. So this one will be altered. So what is, what would an F to an F be? Just if I played F to F, what interval is that? So what's the, default name for a unison. It's a perfect unison, right? So F to F is a perfect unison, but I'm doing F to F flat, okay? If we move from an F to an F flat, what, what happens where we, we're lowering the note by a half step, right? So we're gonna think about the word perfect because this normally would have been a perfect unison and we're gonna, since we're lowering it to the left by a half step, we're gonna also lower the word perfect to the left as well. See, from perfect, then I get to the word diminished, right? So therefore, this is a diminished unison. Got it? So this is an example of how you really need to pay attention whenever you're altering that interval quality name. Um, you need to really pay attention to is that note moving down and to the left or up and to the right? You know, if you were to imagine a piano or a fretboard or whatever, um, is it moving down or up? So for instance, if we have F to A sharp, normally it's a major third F to A, right? So F to A, right? That's a major third. But I'm altering this, this default note of A in the scale to an A sharp. I'm altering it away from what the note normally is in the scale. It's being altered, it's moving, and it's mo being shifted a pitch one half step higher, so we're moving to the right by a half step, okay? So as long as you just think about, okay, what's the direction that note is being altered away from the note that's actually in the scale? So how is that note A in the scale being altered to get to that note A sharp? If you just think about what direction it has to move, and then if you just move it correctly in the same direction on this chart, then you're gonna be fine. So let's figure this one out, A sharp. If I move from A to A sharp, so it was a major third, I move it up, becomes an augmented third. So F to A sharp is an augmented third. Cool? Hopefully this all makes sense. I have PDF printable practice worksheets uh, to go along with each of these videos in my interval series, as well as many other music theory practice worksheets. And there is a link to download those in the description below. And in those worksheets, we also practice identifying and naming intervals and drawing in intervals um, on actual staff paper. So I recommend you check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, it really helps me out a lot. And if you've watched this video all the way through and you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do. I post one video a week and I would love to have you here. Stay tuned for the other videos in this interval series because I will be posting more videos about intervals. So this is not the last one because there's a lot more stuff to talk about when it comes to intervals. So stay tuned for the next videos. Thank you for watching again and have a wonderful rest of your day or night.